Food.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fix your budget. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. I'm Garrett Burdan, chef and registered dietitian, and this spring green salad has ingredients fresh from the farmer's market. You can make it at home. Our strawberries have been rinsed and uh, the tops have been removed, so I'm just going to cut these in half and they'll get tossed in with our fresh spinach. These are beautiful strawberries. I just love the way the color contrasts with the strawberries and with the spinach. Now I'm going to take a jar and I'll use this to mix my salad dressing. So I have sugar and some paprika. Just a little bit of sugar adds sweetness. I have some orange juice and lemon juice. So a little sweet, little tart. A little extra tart with some cider vinegar. And then we add diced onion and some salad oil. We'll put the lid on tight because we're gonna shake this up. That will get this close to being all mixed and emulsified together. And now, we're ready to pour this on top of our salad. You wanna dress the salad just before you're going to eat it. We can toss this together. Make sure that all of the spinach leaves are dressed. And we have some walnuts to sprinkle on top. That is beautiful. This could be served as a side salad, but it can also be a refreshing spring entree with a little protein. Simply place some chicken breast on top for a great main course. You can find the spring green salad recipe at foodhero.org. I'm Garrett Burdan, chef and registered dietitian, and I'm gonna show you a recipe using cauliflower. Cauliflower is a versatile winter vegetable, and I really like to roast it in the oven. Roasting draws out some of the natural sweetness and really gives it almost a nutty flavor. Cutting a head of cauliflower into florets is pretty simple. Just turn the cauliflower over and take the tip of your knife and run it around the edges. And you're just basically removing each floret from the main stalk. Any bigger florets can be cut into smaller pieces, and I like to cut from the stem side up. All right, I'll transfer all of my cauliflower florets to my baking dish. All of these little bits will brown up nicely. And keeping the cauliflower piled, I'm gonna add my oil, and I'll toss that around so the cauliflower gets coated with some oil. 
and then I'll sprinkle on my spices. I have garlic powder, black pepper, onion powder, and some salt. I'm gonna make sure this cauliflower is in a single layer on the sheet pan. And I like to try to turn it cut side down because we'll get some nice browning on those cut sides. The browning is really gonna develop a lot of flavor. This cauliflower is ready for a 400 degree oven. This roasted cauliflower got really nicely browned in the oven, which develops so much flavor. You know, this family-friendly recipe is even great for infants eating solids. You can mash that or puree it for them. You can find the roasted cauliflower recipe at foodhero.org. I'm Garrett Verdan, chef and registered dietitian, and I really love to buy fresh herbs from the farmer's market. You can find so many different kinds from parsley and basil to oregano and chives. Um, so my favorite way to keep these fresh is to treat them like a bouquet of flowers. So I have a glass of water and I'll place the cut side down into the water. And then I just take a plastic bag and put this right over the top to sort of keep the moisture in. And we'll store this in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. I like to use fresh herbs in a lot of different ways. I mean, they can be incorporated into a lot of different dishes, whether it's stirred in and mixed in or just sprinkled on top for extra flavor and color. Today I'm gonna use this fresh parsley in a tabbouleh salad. It's easy to take the parsley off the stems by just placing it on your board and gently with your knife trimming off those broad leaves. The stems down on this end are a little too tough to eat, but up top they're nice and tender. So I'll bunch the parsley up on my board and make a few big cuts through the pile, keeping my fingertips curled under. Then I'll switch positions and make some big sweeping cuts through the leaves. I'll pile this up one more time. And again, with my fingertips on the front of the knife, I'm going to run the knife through, chopping these into smaller pieces. This fresh parsley is ready to mix into the tabbouleh salad. I'm Garrett Verdan, chef and registered dietitian, and I'm gonna use this organ-grown kale to make crunchy kale chips. Now, kale is available most of the season, so you should be able to find it at the farmer's market. With the kale, it has these ribs on here that are just too tough to eat, so I'm just gonna simply pull the leaves right off of the ribs. Now, I grab just enough to make the right bite-sized chip, and I'll put them in my colander. This is something that even little hands can do. You can involve your children really of any age. It's kind of a fun task. Now that I've washed and dried the kale leaves, I'll just put them into a big mixing bowl so that I can add the oil and just a little bit of salt. And we'll use our hands to mix this all around and make sure that all of the leaves get coated with some of the oil and the salt. Kids love how these kale leaves become nice and crisp, like a traditional chip. When we transfer this to a sheet pan, we wanna make sure that it's spread out into a single layer. If the leaves are overlapping too much, they won't get crispy. 
This is ready to go into the 350 degree oven. These kale leaves should be crisp and brittle, and they're really ready for snacking anytime. You can find this kale chips recipe at foodhero.org. I'm Garrett Burdan, chef and registered dietitian, and I'm about to make this farmer's market salsa with Oregon-grown produce. You can find the Farmer's Market Salsa recipe at foodhero.org. I'm Garrett Burdan, chef and registered dietitian, and I'm gonna make a chicken cabbage stir fry. Now this is such an easy recipe to make, weeknights, um, and it's a great way to use your farmer's market cabbage. So with our pan already heated, I'm gonna go ahead and add my cooking oil, and I'm gonna distribute this around the pan so that the bottom gets nicely coated. And I'll go ahead and add the sliced chicken breast. Cooking the chicken pieces should take about four to five minutes. The chicken is pretty well cooked by now, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my cabbage. I have this cabbage cut into wide slices because I like big pieces to bite into with the stir fry. I'll stir the cabbage in, and while that's cooking a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and make my stir fry sauce. That's just water and soy sauce, corn starch and some ground ginger, and some fresh minced garlic. We'll whisk this together to make sure the corn starch gets incorporated into the liquid. And we can pour this sauce in. and stir this in, and as that sauce begins to heat, it's gonna thicken and coat the chicken and the cabbage pieces. Great, so the sauce is starting to thicken up, and this is almost ready to go. You can serve this stir-fried chicken and cabbage as is, but I really like it over some steamed brown rice. If you wanna incorporate more colors, you could add some carrots or red bell pepper. Broccoli would be pretty great too. You can find the chicken cabbage stir fry recipe at foodhero.org.
Hi, I'm Garrett Verdan, chef and registered dietitian, and today I'm going to be using winter squash. I love winter squash because it is available starting in September and goes all throughout the winter months. Uh, the great thing about winter squash too is you can buy it, leave it whole, store it at room temperature, and it really has a long shelf life. So with this butternut squash, we're gonna make sort of a dessert-like dish uh, with apples and a little crispy topping. Um, one thing about squash too is it's sweet and delicious, but it also is a great source of fiber and vitamin A. So with the winter squash, sometimes they're a little difficult to peel, but I like to just use a sturdy vegetable peeler and place the squash on my board, and we just start to peel the skin right off the squash. We'll turn this as we go around, making sure to get down to that orange flesh. We'll flip this over, get the round part of the squash. This is where the seeds are stored. And now that it's peeled, we can remove both ends just by simply trimming that off with your knife. Make sure to keep your fingertips out of the way and just slice that right off. Stand it up on its flat side and we'll cut this straight in half down the middle. Like that. That's gonna reveal the seeds inside and now we'll just take a spoon and scoop those seeds out. So now I'll place this squash cut side down on the, on the cutting board so it's nice and sturdy and I'm going to cut this into thin slices. These thin slices will bake at about the same rate as the apple slices that we're using as well. I have my apples already sliced, so I'm just gonna add the butternut squash slices to the bowl with the apples. Now I'm going to put a little lemon juice on this so that the, uh, so the apples don't brown. Plus it adds a little bit of tartness. It's gonna round out the flavor of the dish. Now I'll mix together the brown sugar, cinnamon, cornstarch, and a little bit of salt. This will add some sweetness and a little spice to our dish. Think of this almost like a crisp crumble or a pie. Okay, now that that's all mixed together, I'll sprinkle this in and stir to combine. I have a baking dish that's already been sprayed with vegetable oil and I'll just pour this right in. I'll cover this with foil and place it into a 375 degree oven for 20 minutes. The apples and squash have baked for 20 minutes. Now I'll make my crumble topping. I have oats, flour, and a little brown sugar, and I'm just gonna add six tablespoons of butter. And we'll use a pastry blender to cut this in so that it makes little pebble-sized pieces for our crumble topping. If you don't have a pastry cutter, you could also use a fork or two knives to cut the butter in. But we really are going for little pieces that will turn into a nice crumbly topping. So I'll bring my, my baked apples and squash over Remove the foil. Oh, those are looking good. And I'll scatter the crumble topping right over the top. Make sure to distribute it well over the whole dish. And we'll put this back into the oven uncovered for another 25 minutes. I like this butternut apple crisp served warm. I think you will too. You can find this family recipe and more at foodhero.org. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love.
Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love. Visit foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty, and fits your budget. Foodhero.org, for recipes kids love.
us at foodhero.org today, where healthy food is fun, fast, tasty. And fix your budget.